Hey guys, it's Iceline. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can make the flash lightning effect that you just saw. So let's get straight into the video. So if you go to the description below, you can see that there's also a download link for the template of the lightning that I used. So it's called flash effects. So if you open this up in After Effects, it's going to look something like this. So you can use this if you want, but I'll also show you a quick breakdown of how I made the lightning as well, in case you want to make it yourself. Okay, so once you open the lightning effects composition, you'll see that there's four layers over here. So for the lightning layer, I use the advanced lightning effects that is within After Effects itself. So these are the settings. So for the lightning type, I choose strike. So you can have it at two different places. For the origin you can have it you can change it so the conductivity state is at 0.1 just so it travels in slow motion when you move it around so for the core settings the radius is 3.3 the opacity is 100 and the color is just white in the glow settings i made the opacity one it's because like i added my own glow later on so you don't really need this one so for the two adjustment layers if you turn this off this is the advanced lightning itself it's just white there's no glow there's barely any glow for this now once you turn on adjustment layer 1, you can see that it changes to a yellow color. That's because I added the video copilot color vibrance effect. Now you can actually download this effect for free from the website. So I have a link in the description below if you want to like download this. Now you don't really need this effect, but it'll be really useful when you're adding the color to the lightning. Now there's also a second adjustment layer. This layer just adds the glow and the motion blur on this. Now you can see that I use a plugin for directional blur. You don't really need this plugin. I just use it because it looks cool. But I'll show you an alternative method instead of that. Now instead of directional blur, if you turn that off, you can see that it looks like this. So to add the blur, if you don't want the plugin, what you can do is you can go to the adjustment layer, you can go to effects and presets and just type in directional blur. And just add that in. Make sure it's on top of glow. Have the direction as 90 degrees. And you can change the blur length. And you can see that it has a similar effect to the plugin directional blur. Now if you wanted to know what the plugin is, it's called the Sapphire Directional Blur. So for this plugin, I'll just use a directional blur from the plugin. If you want, you can have the alternative method instead. Okay, so now that we're done with the lightning, let's get started on the tutorial. So if you look at the actual footage, it looks pretty advanced, but trust me, this tutorial is actually really easy. And you can see that I also have like a body spark like this. And yeah, it's like the only hard thing about this video is that you'll be needing a slow motion camera. But you can literally just use like any slow motion camera from like your iPhone. So what I did was I also used a Twixter Pro plugin, but that's actually really expensive. So yeah, I guess just use a slow motion camera. I just did it to have that extra slow motion in this. And you can see every time I take a step, like the ground sparks as well. So let's get started. Now, first of all, what you want to do is you want to make a new composition. And yeah, I'll have it as 10 seconds long for now. Click OK. And then import your footage. Yeah, so this is my footage. Just add that into composition. Now, it doesn't matter what you call the composition, I'm just going to have it named as Comp1. And now, for this tutorial, I'll just work up to here. So, this is the actual footage. Now, I'll just do the tutorial up to here, just so it's like really small. I don't have to go all the way. So, I'll just trim the comp up to here, just two seconds long. Just show you how the lightning works, like when it's like full speed. And then for the slow motion, and how it differs. Yeah, so this is the original clip. And you might also see that I have my resolution as quarter, because if I have a full then this crappy PC can't handle this. So yeah, I'll just have it at quarter. Just so it's easier to render. Once you have the footage imported, what you want to do is you want to go to the lightning effects composition and then just drag that on top. Okay, so once you have your flare, you'll see that it like the footage itself gets darker. Now the easy fix for that is just go to the mode and change it to add. And also, if you don't see the mode here, you, you might want to click on toggle switches. Yeah. Now, if you go into like the layer effects composition again, you can see that it's really hard to track it around because you can't just move the position of it as like it'll look really bad and it's going to be frozen in place so what you want to do instead is you want to go to the lightning effects and then you want to drag your slow-mo footage at the bottom you want to go back to comp one i'm just going to go to really back and just trim this composition as well and yeah you can see that it's all red so you just want to turn off all the layers except for the lightning and now you can see you have the lightning here. And now this is the fun part where you just have to track the lightning on your body. So for that, you want to go to lightning. You want to press U twice on the keyboard. You want to click on origin. Click on the stopwatch. For me, I'm going to start at the end because it's going to be easier to track. But you can basically just start tracking from the beginning. And yeah, but it's going to be harder to see where you are at the beginning. So I'm just going to start at the end. Now you can have the lightning wherever you want. You can have it attached to the legs. So personally, I think you should have multiple lightning because there should be one for the hand, one for the, one for both legs, one for the back, and one for the head. So firstly, I'll just start off with the head. So I'll just place this over here. 
And yeah, it doesn't matter where the direction is right now because you can change that later. So I'll just have it over here. And you want to once you have like the keyframe set out, you want to move back and basically just track your head. So make sure you have these keyframes set out over here so you can actually see the track following your head. All right, so now let's play and see how it looks. You hit the bottom layer off like the footage itself. You can go back to comp one. And yeah, you can see that lightning's tracked to your ears or the back of your head now. Now you just have to do the same thing, but for the rest of your body now. Okay, also one more thing I'll do now is because you can see like at the start, I'm running at full speed before the slow motion occurs so i want more i want there to be more lightning over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the lightning effects and you can go back you can go down hide the core how the hide the glow and yeah so in the expert settings this is where you want to change it now so this is where i first go to slow motion so over here so on this frame i'm going to have the keyframes for forking decay and all the expert settings and then you want to go like a few keyframes back and then you want to set the forking up You want to set the decay down and yeah this is just making it as complex as you can so you can just play around with these settings so now if you go and play it it's going to look like this so you can see there's more lightning over here and as soon as i go to slow motion there's only one strand of lightning okay so this is like the really annoying part so what you want to do now is since you can't use the same lightning effects it took me a while to understand how you can actually like have the same lightning on different parts of your body so what you want to do is you want to go to the project you want to go to lightning fx and you want to duplicate it so just press ctrl d and now you can see there's lightning fx too now you want to go in there you can go to the slow-mo you can tick that on and hide the rest as well okay so now this is going to be hard to name but just make sure it's lightning fx one two and the different compositions now in this you have the lightning again and you can position it to wherever you want so I'm just going to delete all these keyframes for the origin and yeah I'm going to track this one on the hand itself so this is going to be a bit harder because like you have more tracking to do now if you want to make it easy for yourself you can use the tracker tool over here but I don't see why there's a point to do that because it's like two seconds long yeah so I'm just going to do it frame by frame okay so once you have the origin over here I'm going to have the origin on the hand itself Yeah, so this is how it looks once you've tracked it to your hand. And you can also change the direction if you want. So I'm just going to have it here at the bottom, just so it's in a straight line. So I'm going to actually keyframe that direction in this, just so it follows along in like a straight line with the hand. And let's go to comp 1, have the lightning effects 2, and drop it on top. And make sure the mode is on add as well. So you just want to keep duplicating this again and again so go to lightning effects duplicate it it's going to be called lightning effects 3 and yeah you just go into lightning effects 3 hide the adjustment layers in the flare go to the bottom slow-mo layer hide show that and then just redo all the origin points again and you can have the lightning like four or five times i'm not going to do it on the left hand because it's just too much effort and you're going to have to like rotoscope yourself out if you have it at the back, I'll just show you a quick cheap way to try and get it out of like the way of the front hand. Okay, so I'll do this one on the back. Okay, so this is what it looks like once you have three lightnings. Okay, so one thing you might notice is that this lightning is supposed to be like the lightning on the back is supposed to be behind the right arm but instead overlaps so what you want to do for that is you want to rotoscope the arm now that's going to take a while and the rotoscope for after effects 2020 is really really bad so i'm just going to open the beta version so i'm going to start at this frame and then nail this one so all you need to do is you just want to rotoscope the arm just the right arm what you need to is you, you also need to make sure that the resolution is full for this and you want to get the rotor brush tool and you want to double click on the layer 
And yeah, just race scope the arm. Alright, so now if you want to render the arm, you just go control M. You want to make sure the output module is set as like PNG sequence. Just so you have the transparent background as well. So one thing you want to remember doing is when you have when you export as PNG, is you want to make the channel RGB plus alpha. If you don't have plus alpha, you're not going to get the transparent background. You're just going to have a black background. And so yeah, I'll just go RGB plus alpha. You want to click OK. You want to save it wherever you want. And just click render. Okay, so once you're back into like your main composition, you want to go ahead and import the PNG sequence. So you can just go ahead and drop it down. So you can see that it's not matched with the actual layer, so you just want to find when it actually matches up. There's lightning threes on the back, you want to put that at the really bottom, and then put like the hand, so you can just rename this to hand, or arm, and just place it right above lightning three. You want to just add a slight blur on this, so you just go effect, blur, Gaussian blur. Maybe like a 15 blur. Until you can't see like the really outline of this. And now let's see how it looks. So now you can see that your arm actually overlays on the lightning. So you can't see a lightning in front anymore. What you can see is once you get over here. You can see the glow of the lightning on the arm. So what you want to do is you want to go to lightning 3. You want to press G so you get the pen tool. And then you just want to create a small mask like around here. And then on the lightning 3 you want to press M and then you press subtract. Now if you press F, then you can feather it out. Yeah, now you can see it looks a lot better. Now I'm just going to quickly speed up the video and have one lightning on the right foot and one on the left foot. And yeah. Now this is how many lightnings I'm going to use, just like 5, but if you wanted you can have more. If you want it to look better you can have one on the left arm, but that's going to take too long because then you're going to have to rotoscope the whole body and then place it behind. Once you've done this, you can just get everything except for the footage, pre-compose it, and press OK. And now you just want to select the add mode as well. And yeah, that's how it's going to look. Now if you don't want the lightning to look really vibrant like it does in this, you can select the screen mode and it's going to look a bit dull. So you can have this if you want, it doesn't look bad but if you just want the extra glow then I'll use the add. Okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new adjustment layer and then choose brightness and contrast. Just make the contrast a bit higher just so like the lightning pops out compared to the background. And also for extras if you want you can just add a new adjustment layer. I'm just going to call this distort. You can select turbulence displace. You can bring down the amount, size. And yeah for the evolution you can just press down alt on the keyboard and just click on the stopwatch. And just type in the expression time. Time 500. Just bring down the opacity at the start. You can also add like quick effects of like the sparks coming out of the ground. Now you can just render it out in full. If my PC can handle it. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so this is the final result if you play in full HD. And yeah, I think the distortions in the background are a bit much. So you can just lower that down. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And you can see that the arm overlapping actually looks pretty good and it gives it the effect that the lightning is actually behind the arm and on the back. So that was the tutorial guys, if you learned something new then maybe drop a like and also if you have any questions leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. And yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video.